that we could find or see. Uh, the other man that was getting off didn't make it because they were the Germans shoot machine guns right at their chest and stomach level. So they couldn't miss you. They just cut you down like you were a bird or something. So you saw a lot of casualties around yeah, there you. Yeah, there was a, every place you would look or try to move, there was a person's body laying there. And some of them was all to pieces and some were shot. And it just exploded, that's it. How did you make it across that beach from hiding behind the beach obstacle to the to the high bank that was there to, at the end of the beach? I was running with everything I had. I, I don't know how fast I was going, but I'm sure I was moving along pretty well. I had a, I had a load on me, but I had some assistance, and the officer was pulling me, helping me. But uh, it was a long ways to me. It was a long ways up there, but I understand it was a thousand feet or more that we had to go. I don't know for sure. I no way of measuring. But you came in and took cover under this under high the, bank, under this under cliff. Under the high bank, and uh, whenever we stopped there, I looked around and this soldier was right behind me, and he had a number one on his shoulder, and he said, thank God. And, uh, and then we found, I found, a, I saw a parachute over to the left of where we had come to the bank. And I walked over there, close up by the bank, and I saw a movement, and I thought it was a German, and I took my rifle off my shoulder, and I lifted a candidate a parachute off of this fella, and he said, oh, I'm so happy to see American. And he said, I'm hurt. I said, maybe we can help you. He said, do not go out from this wall. You will get killed. Now, this was a paratrooper, an American paratrooper that you found on the beach under this cliff on, at Charlie Sector at Omaha Beach, and apparently he had come down early on a mission and he got trapped on the beach? He, they had Germans that hit his chute, and it hit, it didn't, it hit the side of the bank. They didn't get high enough. If he had it, it had killed him. But uh, he was landing and he hit the side of the beach, uh, the side of the wall, and he said he fell and he, his arm was hurt. And he said, I played dead, so the Germans didn't know I was down there. When you left your position behind that beach obstacle and you were dashing across the beach to try to get under the cliff, um, you had to run by Americans who had fallen? They, there wasn't a one out there. They had all, see, they, all the ones that were killed, had, the, the water had gone off of them and they were out there. And there was uh, some medics trying to do something good. And uh, I think one or two of those got killed that was out there. But there was nothing ahead of us but that embankment. You got into a battle with a German pillbox. Yes. Um, which was up there on the cliff over you. Now, how did you happen to come to, to have this fight with the Germans in this pillbox? Uh, well... They were firing, we could hear the firing coming from that area. So we, the two of us, crawled down there. We didn't walk down, we crawled to that corner where you could see a tail that there was a, a, a coming down. And when you get up there within uh, 10 feet, uh, 15, you could tell that it was a slope. So we crawled to where we could see, and there was some of that brush that was 
I guess washed up this way. And we uh, curled up there and we could see it. That's when we decided if we can get there and throw in dart back, we can make it. Well, then they, after they threw, we threw a couple of hand grenades, they started dropping hand grenades up above. And, uh, so the Germans were dropping hand grenades down on you? Down on us. How did you handle that? Uh, well, you know, an American hand grenade is five seconds. A German's is nine seconds. So when that would hit the dirt, this officer and this other soldier that was there, they were picking them up and throwing them out faster than it was hitting. And we come close to one or two of them, not like they got us. But then when we got to using our rifle, there was no more hand grenades coming down. And they were trying to, then the, the machine guns from that, I mean the artillery from this uh, tearbox stopped shooting. So evidently we was hitting that wall and then it was ricocheting. Uh, later, whenever it was all over with, we did see where the machine gun that we had fired our rifles, that the bullets had moved back that way. Uh, but we didn't get to sit there and look about it. We had to get on down. Uh, but we were interested in seeing what good we were doing. When you look back at your time on Omaha Beach, what does that mean to you now? It, uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, I, I will never let this go out of my mind as to what I looked at, what I saw when I was there looking at troops going down and thinking about I could be the next one. And I, I was thinking about all the fellows that I had trained with and what we had been taught and it was like losing a brother when you see him falling and see and knowing what was going on. Uh, the day that I went back, when I got to that place, Everything come back to me. I remember every move that I made and everything that I saw. Mm. I, uh, I have, at night time, I, I have some time, I wake up, I'm doing the same thing. I. I never did talk about it because I did. I kept everything. I asked my mother about a month after I got out of service, did she want to know anything about my being in the service? She says, I don't want to hear it now or ever. So I never talked about it. I was asked once or twice about were you ever in the army? I said, yeah, I was there. And that's all I ever said. I, uh, well, we appreciate you sharing your story with us. And you went on from Omaha Beach to serve in the Normandy campaign. You fought your way across France, through Germany, ended up the war in 45 in Czechoslovakia. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. And we want to thank you, too, for joining us for military memoirs.